Hey guys, I just wanted to do a quick video celebrating with you the fact that the Roe vs Wade ruling has been overturned, restoring uh, the decision regarding abortion back to the states, and in many cases we already have trigger laws that are going to go into effect, uh, severely restricting uh, abortion, and that's, I mean, 60 million abortions have taken place, over 60 million abortions since the Roe vs Wade ruling took place, which was designed to kind of seize authority away from those states and away from the people, and in a dictatorial manner, determine that yes, you know, you, yes, these babies can be killed and they don't actually have a right to life. Uh, it was an evil decision, it was also a bad law, it has now been overturned, which gives us more options in the fight uh, that's, that's to come, which I'll get to in a minute, but I do want to, I was looking around at some of the really bad arguments that are being made in favour of abortion and I mean let's just go through a couple of them together because I keep seeing them and nobody's really responding to them very well. So here we go real quick. There's, this is Connor who's got like 9,000 likes on this. He says, America is not the land of the free. America is not the greatest country in the world. Days like today openly prove that. Okay, I mean when he says the land of the free what is he referring to? Because I don't think that most of us, when we use that expression, are referring to the ability to kill people. I mean, unless we're going to say that the ability to be free hinges upon absolute anarchy. I don't think that's what most of us think. Like, if I, if I can't kill my neighbor freely, then I'm not entirely free. Well, yeah, that's, I guess that's, that's one way of looking at it, with, with maximum uh, freedom. But we, we all generally, uh, the, the sane amongst us want some restrictions upon your freedom to harm other people. That's part of it. Without that, we don't have a society that any of us would want to live in. All right, next one over here. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce her name. But in any case, she's getting plenty of attention. So she says, banning abortion will never cease abortions from happening. It will, however, cease ethical and safe abortions from happening. I'm curious to see what she thinks would be an, an ethical abortion, but anyway, I digress. She says, regardless of your beliefs, it is not up to you to force them on someone who doesn't practice the same. Uh, land of the free, my ass. Okay, so that last sentence though, regardless of your beliefs, it's not up to you to force them on someone who doesn't practice the same. Well, isn't it? I mean, because the moment we say to the shoplifter, uh, we're going to arrest you for that, we're going to incarcerate you for that. When he just said that it wasn't a big deal, aren't we forcing our beliefs about property rights on him? We most certainly are. Whenever we arrest people for engaging in assault, so engaging in murder, we're imposing our beliefs about right and wrong, about basic morality, upon them. That is what we do in our society, and that's a good thing. Um, there's this weird anarchistic argument that you ought to be able to do absolutely anything, including kill people. And, and really, that's the only logical argument in favor of abortion, is just, I can do whatever the heck I want, you know, other people be damned. It's just rare to see them really spell it out the way they actually mean it. And so, you know, it takes somebody to kind of come along and say, well, think about exactly what you're saying. And that's what we're doing here. And, you know, now we're sort of getting all these different um, messages about how we should expect grand acts of violence. And I, I do expect some of that because that's already been happening. It's been grossly underreported. You know, in the weeks uh, that have led up to this day, we've had uh, over 40 different churches that were vandalized or, or, or attacked, right, destroyed, uh, windows put out and that kind of thing. We also had at least four different uh, pregnancy crisis centers that were targeted and firebombed. Uh, those stories were completely ignored. I did a video about that recently. We've also had these people, this uh, terrorist group, uh, calling themselves Jane's Revenge. And Newsweek just published this article uh, right after the ruling as if they're trying to encourage it. Because the abortions, abortion rights group, which I would say militant terrorist group, but you know, tomato, tomato, vows night of rage over Roe. I mean, if they were a pro-life group who was targeting abortion clinics, which is the trope, uh, would they really just put like pro-life group or would they also refer to them in some negative light and imply that they were terrorists or something like that? I mean, I think I know. 
and I think that you know as well, but there's, there's very selective reporting in this kind of a case. And so, yeah, you have Jane's Revenge, which is responsible, by the way, for the firebombings of those pregnancy crisis centers. They've taken credit for at least one of those instances, proving that they are, in fact, a militant terrorist group, right? Just so we're all on the same page. At the same time, the Department of Homeland Security has been communicating with Catholic churches over the last couple of days, warning them to expect violence um, after this ruling came out and telling them that they should, you know, come up with security plans for their parishes on how to handle it. Notice that you don't have the Biden administration moving in to help the churches to actually deal with these uh, violent thugs who are targeting churches. And by the way, can you imagine that? Just to stop for a second, okay? You know how there's been this, this sort of, like, it's, it's a meme, a joke on the internet with the, the Nazi who happens to be wearing the skull and crossbones and he's like, are we the bad guys? Well, imagine this. You're, you're about to, you know, like firebomb the church or the pregnancy crisis center that's trying to help these uh, young mothers. Is there a point at which, before you throw the Molotov cocktail through the church window, that you go like, maybe I'm the bad guy? Um, and remember, it's all in favor of abortion. It's all in favor of the supposed right uh, to, to, to kill your child, to end your child's life. And so it would be, it's very difficult to kind of put that into context and imagine the sort of fervor with which these people assert their moral superiority. And they do. They claim that they have the moral high ground, as we just saw a minute ago. And remember, that this isn't the evil white Christian zealots who are plotting and promising terrorist actions. Action, sorry. Those are the people we're told that we're supposed to be watching, just as the January 6th proceedings are going on. But... At the same time, the people who are actually committing these acts aren't the far-right terrorists. They're those on the far left. No, those on the modern left. There really is no far right, far left anymore because they're just kind of... Um, the, the far left extreme of yesteryear is now the, the sort of center left of today. But going forward, right, we've got Roe vs. Wade has been overturned. We should expect some degree of violence, so do be vigilant um, in your churches and those who are manning those crisis uh, centers. But also, we have a lot of non-physical fights coming up as well, because remember, with Roe vs. Wade overturn, that doesn't mean that abortion is banned in every state uh, or throughout the country. It simply means that the power has been diverted back to the states, which means that, as it ought to be, right, that we... that with everything that isn't specified, you actually have the ability to make to, to make choices at your state level. To impact the state, is, it's a lot easier than to impact at the federal level, right? So you have a lot more control in your abortion uh, rules than you would have before. I mean, before it was basically presumed that there was nothing anyone could do because it was ruled by the Supreme Court in a dictatorial manner that nothing could be inferred and therefore that nothing could be changed and it was just a fight that very few people engaged in aside from those who would stand outside to their credit, Planned Parenthood um, centers and they would pray and that kind of thing and they would talk to some people who were going in and, and they had some success on individual level with that but now there is the ability to fight to make changes in the individual states and that's incumbent upon us uh, to play that role in order to to save lives and now we can and thanks be to god i mean this is an amazing day it's one that i think a lot of us didn't even hope for like but pre that leak that came out of the ruling this was something that nobody even thought was, was really that likely to happen this degree uh, we expected maybe just a little bit of of restrictions on abortion, we didn't expect Roe vs. Wade to be overturned entirely, but it's a good day. It's a good day. If you liked that video enough to make it to the end of the video, which is like superhuman in terms of modern attention spans, please make sure to share this with your friends and family. I also have links in the description so you can follow me elsewhere and you can find other videos. Thanks.